Alright guys, Hatch Kramick again today. Hope you're doing well and enjoying your day so far. Latest updates coming down on Rostermania. Potentially, what is going on with the Seattle Surge, now known as the Vancouver Surge, for the upcoming season? We know they're keeping two of their players. They got rid of Hook, they got rid of Brezzi, they're keeping Abuza and O4 around on their roster. And given all the drama that we saw earlier today with this potential Los Angeles Thieves super team going down, apparently Surge might be the team to pick up the pieces to try and get to that next level. Very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you are new as always I'd greatly appreciate it. a couple of things on Sib of course would be very interesting if the rumours earlier today are true if Hydra was to go to this crazy super team over on Thieves because as I said earlier today at that point Cloud9 would be left without arguably their two most talented players they've dropped Sib or basically benched him while they looked for someone to buy him out and maybe that will still happen but um, of course also with Hydra gone I mean where do you go from there it's a difficult rebuild so maybe you have to bite the bullet and bring Sib back at that point it's not out of the realms of possibility there. So, um, you know, this is even Dreal and Sib having a bit of a back and forth on that potential super team for the Los Angeles Thieves. And Sib, I'm sure, would love to be over there on that super team. And maybe that's a possibility as well. If they can't get Scrappy, but they could get Hydra and they could get Envoy, do you bring Sib in to kind of like round out the team alongside Ghosty? Maybe that's not impossible either. So there's a few interesting things going on. This I did want to mention real quick because seemingly ESPN have launched this new show, The Breakdown. And, um, as Hitch says, you don't do a champs episode and look what happens at Scumford Method. So, interesting, just because we talked about the breakdown yesterday, whether it's actually going to ever return again or not, because they've not really done an episode in some time. We talked about the show, whether it could be better. And maybe this tweet here from Hitch kind of implies that they are intending to keep it around. Maybe just the format or something about the show is going to change a little bit on some level to make it, um, you know, more effective going forward. I don't know. Intrude to your thoughts in the comments. Thought it was an interesting update to look at regardless. Just quickly on the scrappy stuff. What is, as it stands, the most likely team that Scrappy's going to be on? Because Ultra would maybe make sense in terms of, right, maybe they just don't get a buyout done. But as far as I'm concerned, given that Cloud9 and Thieves are both looking to get a buyout to happen for Scrappy it probably makes sense that he's going to go to one of those. So maybe Cloud9 is still marginally more likely here. But, um, you know, the voting is obviously pretty split on this. People are saying Thieves is now a possibility after the recent rumours. But, um, yeah, definitely intrigued to your thoughts in the comments. There was also this that people were saying, oh, Intel, Intel. And I do get it, to be fair, because even at the airport in Riyadh, when everyone was departing, and even on the flight home, it was Scrap and Envoy that were, like, in business or whatever on that flight home vibing out. They were vibing out to the airport together and here they are having a good time over the last couple of days. So, um, yeah, seems like Scrap and, uh, and Envoy have maybe, you know, developed a pretty nice relationship. I don't know. I mean, he obviously was only on the team for this season. Seems like he gets on well with Dylan. So, um, you know, what's the possibility there that those guys really do want to stay as a duo going forwards? Probably quite high, to be perfectly honest. And that maybe does change to some degree what the Thieves will think or what the other teams will think trying to form these rosters, given that the players have some say in what happens right like if they say hey like I really want to play with this guy so um if you buy me out you better buy him out as well or whatever then that does change the scenario to some degree but let's talk about this Los Angeles Thieves situation and what exactly next for these guys because um well Thieves Nasty and Thieves Crimp are no longer Thieves Nasty and Crimp. Crimp's kind of bio and everything still says this as of today so we removed Los Angeles Thieves the other day his header as a recording is still this his name as a recording and his picture is still this. However, Nasty has actually updated it further. So we saw the other day they both removed Thieves from their name and, um, well, at least from their bio. And it was quite clear that, you know, they're not going to be on that team going forward. And that's why there's all these rumors now emerging as to what the Thieves might actually have been up to over the last few days. However, Nasty has now gone one step further here and we can see that his Twitter header is gone. It no longer says Nasty from the Los Angeles Thieves in the background. And his name used to be LAT Nasty. It now just says Nasty. Right, so I think that's a done deal that Nasty is no longer going to be on that Thieves roster. They're going to get Scrap if they can. They're going to get maybe Sib if they can't get Scrap. I don't know. And to your thoughts in the comments below. But we're pretty sure that's happening. The question then is where do these boys go? Because they did a very good job at the end of the season. Were critical really to Thieves' run to championship success. Not to winning, but you know, to top four at champs. To second at the Esports World Cup was very commendable indeed. Nasty, I thought especially, was a pretty key part of that. Especially at the World Cup. Had a really good event. So, you know, no surprise these guys should be and will be considered for CDL spots elsewhere. But exactly where might that potentially be? The rumours of last night is that if they were to leave Los Angeles 
since they use Vancouver as their now known, right? Surge, Seattle Surge, Vancouver Surge would be the most likely option with a Boozer and 04 kind of, um, you know, rounding out the roster. So what do you guys think about this potential team? Because they decided to part ways with Hook and Brezzy, those guys gone from the roster, and um, now they've been looking for upgrades in those respective roles. Brezzy was brought in potentially because he had experience with a Boozer and Rambo thought that he would be a good fit to the team to kind of help a Boozer get more comfortable. And that turned out, of course, to be true, really, as the season went on. Hook was, at some point, especially when they had on the roster, like, you know, when Arsides was still there, let's say, early days, Hook was probably the player that was trying the most, but the results weren't still really coming. And, um, you know, we know what Hook is like as a player. His ceiling is high. He's very inconsistent. And maybe Rambo, kind of, as the GM head coach, just decided, you know, enough's enough player with this guy anymore. And, um, you know, we're going to decide to potentially part ways. And, of course, that's what they've now done. The question is, what are they going to do instead? These were some of their numbers, just for example, when they lost to Thieves. I think this was at the World Cup, actually. But, you know, there was a couple of interesting series here. A boozer, one of the other ones he had like better numbers than this, but this is just you know one example of what was happening. A boozer generally though was their best performer, but it was really a boozer and 04 that were carrying the weight at the end of the season. Brezzi was up and down this series, he did quite well, but they still lost regardless. And then Hook was, well, classic Hook really, not the greatest KD and not so much damage, but you know, on his good maps, very impactful, right? That's just kind of how it's been with him. The question is, is this actually an upgrade if they do go through with this move? And is it the right thing to do in the circumstances? Is. Let's say Thieves do form that super team or something happens with Toronto and Cloud9 and obviously Optic and Phase still exist. Seattle are probably trying to cement themselves as you know, what do you want to say? The fifth or the sixth best team, right? Like, Optic and Phase are going to be up there. That Cloud9 team is, you know, potentially going to be up there. But even, let's say, that Thieves team forms, there might be a room to, you know, actually get to a position where you could become the fourth best team. Because if it is going to be an incredibly top-heavy league, and Thieves happens as we thought that it might, and they form this, you know, crazy roster with this Hydra, scrappy, envoy, ghosty type thing going on, then the league is even more top-heavy than before. Obviously, New New York would have to do a big rebuild at that point with Cloud9. Obviously, Toronto would have to do a big rebuild at that point with um, Insight and Kleenex probably staying on the roster there. So um, it's then an even more top-heavy league, and potentially there's an option to break into the top four, whereas last season it was a top four with Thieves on the outskirts. Now it might be a top three, just full stop, with a couple of other good teams being formed around it. So, you know, I get the vision from the Surge boys to try and upgrade. The question, I guess, is, is it an actual upgrade in some sense, because these were Hook's cards in 2024, these were Kremp's cards. So better, right, better numbers, and in that kind of like slaying SMG role, he did a pretty okay job, certainly online this season, that is true. On land though, not as good, that's similar to Hook, and maybe the point is that Kremp is actually in some respect a similar player to Hook, but maybe he's just a bit better in some regards. Then again though, Hook's communication, I thought was pretty good, brings the energy to the team for sure, so, you know, I'm not sure Kremp necessarily does that to the same level, so there's a few few pros and cons for trading out Hook for Kremp effectively, but I kind of see the vision and also I do see the idea of, okay, this player, these players just achieved a good result. So there's clearly a reason for that. They are clearly potentially better players than their numbers indicate. And of course, you've also got to realize the deeper you go in tournaments, the better players you tend to play. So, um, you know, coming top four champs, top two at the World Cup will not skew the numbers down precisely, but definitely will mean the numbers are maybe more impressive than they might otherwise be. And these were nasty as overall cards over the season. He had a pretty damn good season overall. Certainly at the World Cup was very impressive. And he would be replacing Brezzy in this particular example. And this is, to me, more of like kind of a clear-cut upgrade on some level, right? You take out Brezzy, you bring in Nasty. I think Nasty is a more talented player with a higher ceiling than Brezzy. So, you know, sure, I get that one. The risk, of course, is that do you reduce the comfortability of a boozer? Because a boozer was so good towards the end of the season. And, um, you know, it was just absolutely killing it, to be honest and was one of the players that people considered, oh, well, if you're Thieves looking to make a change, if you're Toronto, potentially even that could still be true, looking to make a change, maybe a boozer is the man to look for to try and sign. Seems kind of unlikely, though, as it stands, especially because Surge are not historically good at selling anyone to any team. They just tend to say no for whatever the price is if they want to keep a player, and um, likely that may well be happening here again. So this one I kind of get. Obviously, there's always risk involved when you make a change, and probably for Surge, 
verge of two-man changes the way to go, and Abuza and 04 were the players to keep. So I like the theory. I think the nasty for, you know, bringing in nasty for Brezzi makes sense, and also nasty has experience with Krimp, which is also nice, rather than just putting together, you know, mishmash of players. But then again, is Krimp the right man? There's other SMGs out there you could sign instead of Hook as well, but, um, you know, Krimp certainly should be in the conversation. Seems like that is going to be the case. They got eliminated from the World Cup, of course. They came top four, though, in the end, Seattle Surge. They had a good run there as well. Thieves came top two. Surge had a pretty good run all the way through. Eventually, they fell short to the Los Angeles Thieves, and they were also pretty good, let's not forget, at the World Championship, but they, well, at least we think they were pretty good. They bombed out last place because they bottled a 5-3 lead to Miami. I think it was on a, was it a six-star search map five? They bottled that somehow, so they got out of the tournament. But every other team, including Ghosty himself, said, yeah, Surge were pretty damn nice at that event. So, um, you know, now they're looking to potentially get even better. So, intrigued to your thoughts in the comments. One quick little clip to share with you guys, and then we've got some other stuff to talk about as well. The EG is farming, bro. I promise you he is. Like, bro, you think that vacation's favorite stuff? So like... <laughs> That motherfucker is on a world tour. Oh, uh, shout out to that. Could come back instantly to the stream on. Yeah, we need some fucking gifted. We <laughs> <laughs> need this fucking train going. <laughs> yeah, you know he's gonna do that, dude. I swear. Yo. Oh my god, dude. That motherfucker is everywhere, though. I don't think he's coming back for the next year, Chad. The next season, you might just be fucking. But the bucket needs more time. So pretty funny it will potentially be to see when Pred does get back from his vacation exactly what he's going to be up to because you know he's probably got a bit of a hole in his pocket to fill. Interesting people are noting that ZMJJKK or ZMJJKK whatever. So that is the gamer tag of uh, Kang Kang is known as who is the world championship winning MVP over in Valorant. That's probably not actually him. Someone taking his gamer tag I imagine but you know I know there were some comments on that and I'm sure people would have noticed it so I thought I'd at least quickly mention it. But let's talk about this just before we close out the video because we've talked about some of these crazy roster moves that may or may not occur. Some of the largest duo or even trio signings in Call of Duty history. So here are a few that are worthy of note. I mean, Formal and Krim to Optigan 2014 is arguably, in hindsight, the biggest really. Simpabizi and Cell to Phase, that was a big deal. But of course, that was, you know, going into franchising was a little bit different really than actually signing Formal and Krim as they did going into the start of what was just another season on some level. Envoy and Octane the Thieves, and then Pred and Kenny, a big deal this year. Obviously, Scrap and Hydra would be right up there if this deal was to potentially get done. And, um, you know, these are some other ones, some mid-season roster moves that are worthy of consideration, right? Some massively big deals. Karma involved in a couple of these with great results following onwards. Some of the general discussion seemed to be that, okay, maybe they would be, like, third, second, or whatever, in terms of the conversation for greatest ever duo or trio pickups. But I guess largely that depends on the hindsight, because if it was to happen, then you've got to look back on the situation and then decide whether in a couple of years this actually was successful or not. But very much intrigued to your thoughts and all this in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care, and I'll see you next time.